I'm going to share something that nobody really knows about me. When I was 15, I wanted to kill myself. I know it's a little grave to start with this, but uh, it's true. Um, I was 15. I was naive. Um, it was my second year in the sports school. I was in the sports school, and it was my, I think it was my 10th year doing competitive swimming. So there I was. I was um, in my boarding room ledge, near the ledge of my boarding room window, with a stupid plastic knife um, hovering over my wrist. No thoughts in my head, just, just sounds, words, things people have said to me. I was a very self-conscious kid um, with an anxiety disorder that was never properly diagnosed because I was always afraid to admit the simple fact that I hurt easily. I hated, um, I couldn't stand being hated. I couldn't stand disappointing people. What was I being bullied over? My height. Yeah, <laughs> it's stupid to say this, but um, I am 172 cm tall, which works out to be the average Singaporean male. But in a school full of athletes, guess who the shortest guy is? It's me. I was the shortest kid there. And the only way to make the pain go away, the only way to silence the sounds in my head was the knife or the drop below. That was the saddest day, the worst day of my life. The best day of my life also had to do with sounds in my head. I was eight and um, I was rehearsing with a friend for a talent time piece. He was playing the piano, I was playing the violin when I chanced upon this thing called relative pitch. Now what's relative pitch? Um, it's not perfect pitch, but it's definitely as cool. Scientifically, relative pitch is the ability to play or to comprehend a song and all its musical complexity, um, chords, harmonies, melodies, structures, um, rhythm, right after playing it, right after hearing it for the first time, or maybe a couple of times. What it seemed like to me was an explosion of colors and, um, and emotions in my mind. Suddenly, every song I had ever heard up until that point made sense. Every note, every color, every, um, every semblance of a beat spoke to me in a different language and um, in a different mode, in a different color. I didn't know it at the time, but I had just chanced upon this thing called synthes uh, synthesis. S sorry, not synthesis. Synesthesia. So that's what it's called. What is synesthesia? I'm going to try and show it to you just a little bit. Scientifically, synesthesia is what happens when people see um, colors or, uh, or, s or, or colors or feelings or tastes uh, from either a sound or, or anything. What happened to me was I had colored hearing. So in any melodic scale, if I can get a quick soundtrack really quick. So in any melodic scale, you have do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Or if you're more number inclined, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What my mind did to me was it associated each note with a color. And not just a color, but a gender. So one was a white man. Not white as in race, but white as in color. So one is a white man, two is a red woman, three is a green man, four is a brown woman who always reminded me of my mother. And it's a true story. Five is a gray man, six is a maroon woman, seven is a blue man, and eight is a white boy. So that's what I did. And then I started learning chords. And my mind started associating um, emotions with chords. So you have your, just a simple chord structure. I associated this with happy, sad, happy, anxious, sad, and hopeful. And then I started learning new chords, and this became perturbed, evil, majestic, horny. I, I can't lie, it really does say horny. Um, and then I started learning new chords, and um, 
I started associating colors to these chords. So this was yellow, dirty yellow, walnut brown, and gray, but like a sexy kind of gray. It has to be that kind of gray. So Fly Me to the Moon would go, Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. In my head, I saw sad white boy, perturbed woman, angry blue man and a green guy. And that's really weird. Um, but it's the truth. And that was me. So I carried on with this phenomenon, um, not knowing exactly what it was. But what I did that very day was I sat down behind my keyboard and I played every single song I knew up until that point. It was amazing. Um, and something just clicked. Something just felt right and everything was perfect. And that was the best day of my life. Now, what do these two days have in common? Almost nothing. One day was really crappy, the other day was really awesome. But both days showed me, or taught me something really important about myself. Both days showed me how I hear and process things and how different my reactions could be at a, at a glance. Both days were about the mind. Which brings me to the title of my story. Walk, walk with your mind and run with your heart. A little bit more about me first. Um, I was born into the coolest family ever. Um, my dad and mom, they fed life into me like a buffet, just kept feeding me with stuff. Um, I did everything as a kid. I, I swam, I had swimming class, I had uh, piano and violin, I had drama class, I had swimming, I had gym gymnastics. I don't know why I was put in gymnastics. I was, um, and I became a better man because of that. They gave me options. Swimming, though, was the priority because it was the thing I was best in at the time. I notched up some decent times. I joined a club program, got picked up by the sports school, ended up on the youth team, the national youth team, um, had a chance to travel the world, and had a competitive career for about 12 years. Now in swimming, we learned this thing called negative splitting. What's negative splitting? It's a competitive tool, and it's a fantastic way to piss people off. It's so good. Um, basically, what this is is, okay, in every race you have two halves, right? First half, second half. To negative split is to deliberately, deliberately go slower in the first half than the second half of your race. That's it. So you pace your opponent, and when it's time, you go for the kill. What this requires, though, is extreme sensitivity to your pace how fast you're going at any point in time. It also requires you to be extremely aware of your body condition, your heart rate, how fast you're going, how much you have left in a tank, and of course, your opponent. Your mind becomes such a, a finely tuned instrument. You don't want to run too fast. Relax, walk, pace, calculate, breathe. And when the time comes to flip the switch, you put your mind away, you put your head down, and you put your heart into it, and you run with everything that you have. Walk with your mind, run with your heart. That is negative splitting. Chapter one, there are two chapters. Chapter one, the mind. Chapter two, the heart. Chapter one, the mind. I was incredibly close to my mom, incredibly. Um, she and I had so much in common, but we were both very negative people, and we were so, so critical about the things that people would say to us. In some ways, she, she blamed that for uh, the cancer that struck her when she was 40. She fought it for four valiant years. Four valiant years of people stopping and staring and commenting about her fluctuating weight, the baldness, the wigs, the pain, the loss of body control. She never made peace with it. She did a really good job pretending, though. She passed away when I was 12. Two weeks after she passed away, I found this. We were moving house and I picked it up from one of the shelves and inside it are pages of her handwriting. It's pretty much one giant love letter to my sister and I. In this she writes, 
Ben and Narelle, I am so sorry. I understand how you feel right now, and even in the next few days or months or the next year, it's okay, whatever feelings you may have. I may look sleeping, but I'm in heaven looking down on you. You must not feel sad for too long. At most one year, okay, darling? It's a deal. I love you eternally, and that means forever. Later on, she, she apologizes to me in writing for passing down the gene of negativity and anxiety. How upset is that? She felt sorry for me. But in it, she also gave me the analogy of a story. You see, we're all writing stories. We're all the main characters. We're the protagonists. But we're also the script writers. Sure, we throw in plot devices and supporting characters, and we try to juicy up the story, juicing up the story to make it really interesting and palatable for people. But we decide who the main character is. We decide how he looks, how he feels, what his traits are. Do I let people hang labels on me, or do I craft my own labels? I'm writing the script. I am telling the story. I'm not living out someone else's script. They can say anything that they want, but it doesn't stick because I have the pen. That's what stopped me from hurting myself that day in the boarding room window with that plastic knife. The knowledge that I had absolute control over my mind. I could create a filter and block out um, and, and only let in the things that make sense to me and block out everything that didn't make sense. Almost like writing music. I put in the chords and the melodies that makes sense to me. The colors are never wrong. A G minus seven chord is never orange. It's always gray. The only time it's not gray, the only time I can't see the color is because it's in the wrong place. And that means it's just noise. I realized something that day, something I've always known, that in life there will always be noise, bullies, armchair critics, keyboard warriors, analysts, pundits, who exists for the sole purpose in your life to piss you off. And you know what? They call you names. They put you down. They call you short, fat, ugly, hopeless. And here's the thing. They're so important. So important. So important that I wrote a poem about it. It goes like this. There are people who talk. There are people who do. The people who talk need the people who do. The people who do need the people who talk. There are people who talk. There are people who do. Sounds like Dr. Seuss. Um, see, the people who talk are the noise. The people who do, you and I, we make music. Make music from the noise. How else are diamonds made? When the noise first hits me, it feels like a bullet, that anxiety. I, 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 can't, I can't move, I, I freeze up, I can't think. And it just spreads, I'm immobile, and um, it's, like a, it's like a virus, it's like a poison. But before it hits my heart, I grab hold of it, and I take a look. It's just another chord, it's just another note, as beautiful as ever, but in the wrong place. So what do I do? I take it out from that hurtful place, and I slip it in to the part of the song where it fits perfectly. And then I can hear the colors. And then everything makes sense. So there I was with this profound sense of, uh, of humanity, the knowledge that in life, and th the same with you, there will always be noise. What you do with that noise makes you who you are. And I had this knowledge in my head. I was, I was so pumped. I was so excited. And I had 10 years worth of swimming experience, right? And that's all I pretty much knew how to do and the weight of people's expectations bearing down on me. And that's when I decided, oh, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. I'm done. And, and not just that, I, I wanted to do art. I wanted to, to write, to act, to make music, to tell stories. And thank God that um, my parents, my dad was so supportive of that. But there was still that voice, that there were still other people talking. And it was still a really tough decision I think of all that time and money spent 
on my sporting career, the, um, the six hours a day training schedules, my dad's crazy cheering antics and my swim meets, um, that, that drive, that pride, that under-21 record, that potential gold medal at the SEA Games, all that. And um, thanks to the incredible infrastructure, a practically guaranteed bachelor's degree in sporting whatever, sports science, management, psychology, you name it. All that thrown away for, for what? A hobby? You're sort of starting from scratch. You know that, right? What sort of sustainable income does an actor or musician make? Does an actor or a musician make? Surely you can pursue these things on the side, but how is that a viable career option? How are you going to provide for your family? How are you going to afford a car, a house? What about your CPF? Do you think it's that easy to find jobs as a freelancer? How is singing and dancing on stage like a monkey a respectable occupation? Don't you think you're being a little irresponsible? I could feel that anxiety disorder creeping up again. But surely there must be a reason for this madness. Surely there must be a reason why I was wired this way. Why movie soundtracks are a must-buy for me. Why, why um, a simple comment about my height or whatever it is sets me off like crazy. Why I go to the movies and I cry more than the average girl. It's true. People can vouch for that here. <laughs> you see, if I can harness the power of heightened emotions, is that not what artists do? Enough of the school plays and the projects. Could I actually do this? What have I learned in my life up to this point that can help me right here, right now? Negative splitting. Walk with your mind. Run with your heart. Okay. Chapter one, the mind. And this is where I started to apply what I learned. Okay, walk with your mind. What do I know? What are my attributes? What am I good at? Um, I can, I know a bit of music. I can play a couple of instruments. I can write. I can't dance. I can swim. Yeah, it's, it's practically useless now. Uh, what else? Uh, know my playing field. Um, what is the local music scene like? Small, growing, diverse. Here are my favorite local bands. Here are my favorite stage actors. This is where I want to be. Here are the schools, here are the workshops, here are the theater companies, here are the auditions, here are the, here are the uh, radio stations, here's your musical score, here is your YouTube channel, here are the networking parties, here are the record labels, here are the movers and shakers, here's a musical instrument, here are the Sam Willows. So I saw everything at one go, everything laid out for me, and I freaked out. Because there's so much to do. But I was never more excited, and I was so convinced that this is what I was meant to be, meant to do. And the only thing left to do was to run. Chapter 2, the heart. There's honestly nothing much to this chapter. It's that simple. It's the moment where it's the point of no return. It's the moment where you decide where your sails are set, you know exactly the direction in which you're traveling. That's why you put all those years and hours into the pool or the track or your instrument or your craft, perfecting it, getting all those nuts and bolts in place so that when the time comes to get on that starting block or that stage, you let it all go. And you put the mind up there. You put your heart up there. And all that fear and anxiety falls away as well. <laughs> anything is possible. I had to make that decision again after finishing up Army. On one hand, I had all these colleges that I wanted to attend. and the other, I had job opportunities that uh, I didn't even know existed yet, but I had faith that they would come. And don't get me wrong, school is very important. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be coming, going back to school uh, one of these days. But what is life if not the craziest adventure, right? So yeah, I ran, I ran, and I've been running for the past two years. I've been so fortunate to be involved in a number of theater projects, films, uh, writing, ri writing, writing projects, theater productions, and I learn every day. As for the band, the Sam Willows, we've been running as well. We formed last year, and this year we had the amazing opportunity to play, uh, to make music at seven different in seven different countries, 
and play at five different music festivals. And that's crazy. I, I, I can't fathom it. And I am so humbled by people's faith in us and our music. I still hear the noise. I still fight the demons. But it gets better every day. Bob Marley has a quote. He says, people will always hurt you. You just have to find the ones worth suffering for. So, what about you? What do you want to be? What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? There's always going to be noise. Find the color in the noise. Find the music in the noise. Know who you are. Know what you're made of. Work your butt off. Learn what you need to learn. And when the time comes, when the stars are aligned and the world is at your feet, relax. Let it go. And get up on that stage with your heart and run. Here is your life. Here's where you start. Walk with your mind and run with your heart. Here is your life. Here is where you start. Walk with your mind. Run with your heart. Thank you.